What's up guys, my name is Mike the Coder and today we are going to talk about sets. So uh, before we start going over all the functions about sets, let's just uh, go over some of the properties. So elements in associated containers of a set, sets are basically associative. Um, they're referenced by their key and not by their position in the container. So it's not like an array where I have like indexes, a set, there's no, there's no position. Okay. Um, the elements in the container follow a strict order at all times. So all inserted elements are given a position in this order. So if I, if you insert values in the set there, they follow a strict order. Okay. Um, the value of a set is also the key used to identify it. So once I insert a value into the set, that's how they use it to identify it. No two elements in the container can have equivalent keys. That basically means that if I insert uh, two things there that are the same, it's it's in, uh, it's still going to be the same thing, right? So there's there's no duplicates. Um, everything has unique keys. No two elements have the equivalent keys. So remember, no no duplicates. And the container uses an object to dynamically storage its needs. So that just means that um, you could like modify, like change the size of it by dynamically allocating it when you add things to it. Okay, so let's actually talk about the first thing. Um, oh yeah, so th there are also parameters you could use. Um, if you want to change a comparator, you could do that. And you could also change like this allocator type. Uh, I'm not going to go over that, but you definitely can. Uh, you also could change the type of you want, want the set to be. Okay, so let's actually start with the constructor. So I'm going to actually go... Oh wait, why did I use OBS? My bad. Uh, Visual Studio. So let's start with the constructor at the big top. Okay, um, so there's the empty constructor, which just means that you just create like literally nothing. So if, uh, if we go back in here, uh, hold up, it's gonna take a little while. Do, 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 do. Hold up. Yeah, okay, so if we, I'm gonna just delete all the other stuff I had above real quick. So uh, if you want to import a set, just do hashtag include um, uh, parentheses set. Okay, so it's like, I use this bits thing to include everything, uh, but if you want to do a set, you would just do that. Okay, yeah, include and then set. That's what you would do. But this bits macro already included everything, so that's why I'm not doing that. Okay. Um, so yeah. So the first constructor is pretty easy. It's just the set, left bracket, and then integer, and then your name of your set. So let's do first. That's what they do in the example. So yeah, this just creates like a set that has nothing in it. Okay. All right. Uh, the second one you could do is a a range constructor, which tells me you how many elements corresponding from the element you want to add in that range. So for that, you could um, what that means is like I, if I have like another, another, uh, if I have, let's say I have like uh, let's say I have an array or a vector. Let's see, let's say two copy right. So I have like one, two, three, four. If I want to copy like a range between the start to the end into my set, I could do that. So I would just do, I would do, uh, let's get the do first. Do first and I'll do this. And I do copy dot begin, copy dot end. And this will just copy all the range from, of copy into first. So then you would have uh, one, two, three, four. Okay. And then if you want to like change, like how much you want to copy, could do like plus one and that's gonna include from two three two three four the elements of two to three four and so on and so forth so yeah you could do that but uh let's just make sure this actually works so we're gonna go here and uh we're gonna actually go through line by line because that's how people use the c plus plus okay um so yeah here so once they have copy Copy has one, two, three, four, right? And first has nothing. So then after this, first has one, two, three, four. See? One, two, three, four. 
So that's how you, you use the copy constr uh, the range constructor using the set. And then let's say I just want to copy like, instead of from beginning to end, let's say I want to copy like from the second place to the end, right? Air vector, then that's what it would do. Um, I actually could print this. All the values like that. So then um, yeah, it's going to print all the values. So this is going to copy from two, oh uh, yeah, three to four, three and four, yeah. So that only copies three and four because that goes from the beginning plus two. So that's going to copy everything from here and after to the end. It's not going to copy the first two values. It's going to copy everything after the second value. So yeah, um, so that's the copy. Uh, that's the range constructor. Um, you also have a copy constructor. So if I want to create like a, let's see. Uh, yeah, okay, if I want to create a copy constructor, simple. Um, so let's say I, I have, I have like two sets. Let's say I have this set copy one, two, three, four. And then if I want to copy this, all I have to do is just pass in copy. And then it should just copy all the values. So if I have two sets, if I want to copy the first one to the second one, I just create and initialize it and I just put the the name of the previous set into the new one that I want to create and it will just copy everything over. Um, okay, uh, you have a move constructor. This is just like, kind of just moves the elements. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think you'll ever need to use that, but I think, do they have an example of that? They might. Um, I don't even think they do. It's kind of old constructor. Moves with the allocator. So alloc is separated and the elements are moved. Otherwise, no elements is constructed. Uh, move set. So this is a copies constructor. Uh, I mean, I, we could try it. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, let's see. We'll, we'll, let's look at this. Uh, y alloc constructor. Da, 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 da. Instance of that type. How to use... Uh, let's actually see, look up how to use that. I don't actually know how to use the move. Cause like, why would, okay. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, let's, I mean, we could try a, okay. So we have copy and then do this. I haven't actually used this before. What was it? This allocator underscore type alloc. Yeah, I have never done the move constructor before, but if if there is one, yeah, let me know how you guys do use it. Uh, they don't have to show how to do how to do it actually, but yeah, um, alloc allocator object. I don't know. Uh, let's see, move constructor example. I'm pretty sure like delete explicitly delete. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Is there... Yeah, I don't know. Let me know if you guys know how to use the move constructor, because I don't actually know how to use that. You probably won't, won't ever you need to use that. Okay, uh, another one is initialize a list constructor. So if you want to do that, you could just, like, do this. You just create a list here and should automatically create your set. So yeah, I just use like braces here for your inside your list of values you want to put in and then they'll initialize your set. So if you run it, it should have one, two, three, four. Yep, one, two, three, four. Yeah. So that's the list constructor. Um, so I think that's all you need to know about constructors uh, in sets. Uh, another thing you can pass in a comparator, class comparator, and that's if you want to like compare classes with each other. Um, 
I'm not gonna do that, but like if you have like two objects where you need to compare them together, then that's a good way to do it. So yeah, you're passing the comparator. Um, let's go back. So that, that was the, all of that. That was the constructor. Uh, the destructor is called when you, I mean, if you want to override it, it kind of just destroys it. Um, oh yeah, you could use the copy uh, set equals operator. So that just copies one set to another. So like if I have like, um, let's say set second, let's say five, six, seven, eight. And if I want to change first to become second, so let's print out first, first, before. So this is before, copy. And let's print it out after copy. So if I want to change first to become second, I'll just do first equals second. And that'll just copy everything from second into first. So then after the copy, it should get, get changed. So if we go back here, we're going to have, so we have one, two, three, four, and then after the copy, it becomes five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Let's go back. <laughs> let's go back. Uh, so you constructor, destructor, operator. Okay. Iterators. Uh, this is exactly the same thing. Um, iterators are just used to like loop through a set. So if I want to loop through a set, I do, um, ah, oh crap, iterator, I think it's like this, ah, oh crap, okay, uh, let's actually do use this. Yeah, okay, so you just use, like, begin, middle, end, um, yeah, this is, this is the, this is the operator if you want to do it. So if I want to loop through a set, you use this. I want to use iterators to loop through a set. So we have set iterator it. This is the name it, and it's going to be it's going to be your set name. So for us, it's going to be first, then first dot end, and then plus plus it, and then we just print out star it, and that's how you would uh, print out all your values in your iterator. So yeah, that's how you would use an iterator to go through loop through your set and print values. Okay, um, in the new version of C++, you don't actually need this. You, it, it's just use auto. So I can actually remove this and say auto it is equal to first stop begin. It is not equal to first dot end plus plus it. And it'll do the same thing. You want two, three, four. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's the begin and end, right? The it. Iterators are just, uh, they're basically like positions that you could start from beginning and go to end. And they'll print out all the elements. Um, if I want to return, uh, if you want to print out backwards, you could use R begin and R end. So it's the same thing, but we're going to put R begin and R to end. And then it's going to print everything backwards. So instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, it becomes 4, 3, 2, 1. See, 4, 3, 2, 1. Um... Oh okay, yeah, there's also constant iterator. So this means that you can't really change the change the elements. So in other iterators, if you like do star it equals, they'll change the el element. But here, this iterator, C begin, it's not gonna change the element. So like uh, if I were to put the iterator before R begin right here, and then I do like star it is equal to like seven, it's gonna change the Iterator. Oh wow, my bad. Oh crap. I have to do the set and begin. Uh, how many it was? Oh dang, I forgot how to. Hold up. Um, yeah, so it's set int iterator. My iterator. Yeah, this. So, like, if, if you were to. In regular iterators, you could actually modify the values by changing the value of the position. So here, I start out with uh, an iterator called first stop again. So it's going to point to the first position. And if I do like uh, it, 
is equal to like seven. Oh wait, star eight. Oh, I can't do this. Oh, modify L value. Okay. Um. There's definitely a way to change the positions. Uh. Oh wait, hold up. Okay, uh, there's a way to do it if you use the iterator, but yeah, for constant iterators, you can't really change it. Uh, yeah, so these cannot modify the contents point too. But uh, oh, I think you could do it here actually. Hold up. Oh no, I can't do it. Mm, why can't I do it? I have no idea. There's definitely a way to change the value using iterator. And sets change. I think there's definitely a way. Oh, okay. You have to like erase and then erase. Yeah. Okay. So like you can't actually do star it equals. You have to like erase the elements so, like with an iterator. If I want to change the element using iterator, I would just do first dot erase it. And then it's going to erase the first value. So if we print this out, uh, Okay, yeah, hold up. Yeah, okay. So here, before the erase, after the erase. Before erase, then after erase. So you could actually erase the value using the iterator. So if you look here, before the erase, I would print out one, two, three, four. Then I erased the beginning iterator, right? So we had the iterator pointed to the beginning position first, which is this one, right? Because our set has one, two, three, four, and has a value one in the first position. So then after I did first dot erase, it, it, it just erased the value of one. So it became two, three, four. So yeah, you could erase values with iterators and sets. Um, you cannot erase, but with a C, C begin, so if there's like constant iterators, you cannot erase it. So I can't do like uh, first dot erase it. Like it's not gonna allow me. Uh, we could try printing it out, but I don't think it will allow you. Huh? Wait, something's not right. It shouldn't have allowed you. It should not have allowed you to done that. Const iterator. Oh, oh, I had a regular iterator. Hold up. Um, oh, okay. This is what I did. I created a regular iterator and I said to const iterator and that's somehow allowed it to be but you can't do that. Like if you create a const iterator, it will not allow you to. That's strange. You create a regular iterator and it would actually erase it. Wait a minute, something's really not right. Something, it, sh it should not allow you to do that, but okay, whatever. You can't, you're not supposed to be able to change that. But yeah, um, const iterator, you should not be able to change for C begin and C end for const iterator. Uh, there's also const reverse iterator, which is the same thing. CR begin, CR end, which goes from backwards. Um, yeah, I don't know why it would allow me to erase that. 
See, okay, now, now it's not allowing me. Okay, that's weird. That's super weird. Yeah. So a const iterator. Const reverse iterator just means it's pointing to the end of the sequence. And you cannot erase, use it to erase things. Okay. Um, what else we have? We have empty. Okay, so we could check if an iterator is empty. Or not iterator. Uh, we try to check if it's set as empty. So first has values uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. So if I want to check if it's empty, I just empty. It should tell me if it's empty. And it should be false, which is zero. Yeah. So uh, I could do like if it's empty, print out it's empty. Else it's not empty. So it should just print out not empty. Yeah, it's not empty. Okay, uh, let's go to the next one. All right, uh, you could return the size. So we have uh, we have values one, two, three, four. So our size currently is four four elements in our iterator. So we could just print out the size. Not our iterator, our set. So here we'll just have four elements. C4. Keep in mind, if you were to insert the same element twice, there's no duplicates, so it's still going to be four values. See? It's still four values. I inserted four twice into the first set, but when I print out the size, it's still four values. Because there's no duplicates. Okay. Um, we have empty, we have size, max size. Okay, this is a maximum possible size the set can hold. Um, I don't actually know what that is actually, so print out the maximum possible size it could hold. Otherwise, we'll throw an exception, I think. So maximum possible size a set can hold is about 2 million values. 214 million values. Um, okay, it's no guarantee it could hold that size actually. Okay, so if you get 214 million values, something's wrong. Um, okay, insert and delete. Uh, that's pretty easy. So let's say I want to insert the values 1, 2, 3, 4, and I don't want to use a list to initialize values. I just do insert 1, insert first dot. Uh, let's actually call it my set. Make it a lot more. Insert 2 and so on and so forth. So now if I want to print all the values in my set, it should have one and two. So here, I'm gonna open it, and it should have one and two, yeah. So that's what it has. So that's how you insert values. You just dot insert and whatever value you want to insert into your set. Um, you could also erase, so I could just do erase. Uh, I think there's a, two ways to do it. You could erase using a position iterator, or you could just use it, erase the value. So, yeah. So one way to do it is, let's say my set had like one, two, three, four. I want to erase the first position of my set. I just do my set dot erase, my set dot begin plus one. Uh, actually just do begin. So that's going to erase the first element. So I should have 2, 3, and 4. 2, 3, and 4, right. Then if I want to erase like the second position from here, here to then, uh, what's the problem? Uh, hold up. Let's see. Uh, Oh, you can't, you can't do that. Okay, uh, there's no positions in, in sets, iterators. So you're gonna have to do like, I, uh, you have to do plus plus, it plus plus. So you can't do like plus two or plus three because there's no positions in sets. So you only could like increment it by one. So if I wanna erase like the second element, I just have to increment it by one and then do erase. So it should have two, three, four now. 
Oh wait, yeah, it should have 134, 134. Yeah, because that incremented the second element here. So then it erased the two and you have 134. Because originally it pointed to the beginning and I added one to the second position. So now it's here and the two. And then when I do erase, it removes two. So now I have 134. So that's what it has. Then if I want to erase three, I just do it plus plus again. Increment my iterator again. And then it should just erase three. So yeah, you can only, yeah, so now we have one, two, four. So it, it only could, it only could get removed like one by one. Like I can't just like plus two on the second position in my set. Okay, so that there's that. Um, you, you also could remove the value. So if I want to remove like the value four, I could do that. Do my set erase four. And then I would just have one, two, three now because the four is gone. Yeah, one, two, three. Um, and that's it. Uh, first and last is like a range. Um, now let's say I want to erase all the elements. I just do erase my set dot begin my set dot end. And then it's just that's that's just gonna erase all the elements. Yeah, I'm just gonna have nothing. So yeah. There's like a range you could remove begin to that. Um there's that. I think that's it. Oh you could do clear. Oh you could do swap also. Uh so if I have two sets I could actually like swap one with the other and I'll like swap them. That's pretty cool. If I want to do like uh, one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. And then I print out the first value and then I print out the, see the first set. I'm gonna do the same thing. There's gonna be second set. And it's going to be second set. So I print out the first and second set. And then I do print out after swap. So then after I swap it, this is, uh, you could do, what is the syntax? Oh yeah, first dot swap. So it would be my set dot swap second set. All right, so you would put the name of the set, the two sets that you want to swap. So my set was the first set and second set is the second name of second set. So then if you do my set dot swap second set, it swaps. And then we could print out both of them again. So yeah, um, so first set has one, two, three, four. The second set has, set has five, six, seven, eight. So if you swap them, now the first set has five, six, seven, eight, and the second set has one, two, three, four. So they're swapped. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, we also could clear, this just removes everything. So if I wanted to first set, second set, uh, after clear, let's clear. So I could do my set dot clear, and it just removes everything. So then, here we have one, two, three, four, and then if I do my set dot clear, it clears. It. So now I, I just have nothing. So yeah. Um, what's the second one? M place. Okay. Uh, just constructs. It's kind of like insert, but I think it returns. Okay, it returns an iterator to the already in insert element. So yeah, so the difference between here and insert is the insert doesn't return an iterator. So here it actually returns like a position. So if I want to do like, um, okay, let's say I insert like five, six, uh, let's remove. Okay, let's say I do my set dot in place five, All right? So this is going to insert five into the my set, but uh, I also want the position where it is at, so I could do like an auto it, so it returns an iterator. Then I could check if it's um, if it exists or not. 
So it returns like a pair. Um, so if it's inserted, it actually increases the set by one. And do, 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 yeah, that's it. Moves or copy the value. Okay, uh, so here, yeah, so here it would do, uh, do, do, do. yeah. We could check it by doing if it dot second is true then if that's the case then not exist actually wait let me see what it actually prints out i want to see what the iterator actually does no i've never I've never actually used mplace um inserts like a pair right Ah oh, dang. Okay. Uh I want to see what both of these values are. Hmm. Why can't I do that? Okay, I'll copy this. I think it tells if it's already inserted or not. I think that's what M place does. But I'm not 100% sure. Okay, so. Okay, okay. So it basically it just returns like the pair. Uh, the first value is just like if it's. This is the value that you inserted, and the second one if it actually was inserted. So here if it's. Uh, if I already inserted it twice, the second one would be false, but it's not, so yeah, it does nothing. So like, if I inserted four twice, the second pair would that it has is that would be false. But four would already exist. See, four false. So this means the value already existed if you insert it twice. So there is like, there's a pair of two values. The first iterator is like the actual value you want to insert. The second one is like a Boolean that tells you if it's already inserted or not. So because we already inserted four, the second one returns false. Um, if we didn't insert a duplicate, it would have returned true. So here it was four was already inserted. So it prints out foo already inserted in my set. It's actually set to say four. So if we print it out, it would say four already exists in the set. Yeah. Okay, so that's in place. I think in place might be faster than insert actually. Um, right, let's actually go to insert. In place is logarithmic. What is insert? Oh yeah, logar it's still logarithmic. Okay, so like it, it doesn't even matter. Okay, uh, we have in place, we have in in place hint. So it gives you a hint on the position where it can be inserted. Okay, that's pretty cool. I've never heard done this before. Okay. Um, well, let's just copy this. I've never actually seen this before. Okay, so they use a in place of strings. So let's actually see what this does. I've never done in place hint before. Okay, so they have my set. They created a const iterator, and then they okay. So it has alpha, omega. Does it tell you? Okay, so the iterator tells you. What does it tell you? I think it tells you the location it's at. Inserts a new element in the set if it's unique with a hint on the in 
elements or position. This element is constructed using args as its construction. I don't get it. Gives you a hint on where it's new it's new position. Omega pointer. I mean it does not really Wait a minute. No? I don't think you'll ever need to use this. <laughs> Why not just use in place? What, what, what was the point of in place hint? <laughs> okay, whatever. It, it would give you like the the location where it's at, I think. Hint of where it would be. An insert position. It's pretty weird. But yeah. Okay, Um. so we have in place, hint, uh, key, compared. So here it would compare the keys if you want to do it this way. Um, yeah, dot key comparator. So I think normally it inserts like, comparator it inserts is the smaller sign. So it goes like smallest to greatest. We have like one, two, three, four. Like if I do like insert one, two, three, four, it would do that. Um, like dot key comparator. So yeah. Um, I mean, we could we could print it out. So, so here we have a my set. We just have an integer called highest, and we don't use it, but we have a key comparator. You get your set dot key underscore comparator, and what does this print out? Uh, I, mean, I don't. I don't. It doesn't even show it. Let's see. Key, my comp. Oh yeah, right here. Yeah, it's less. It's less than sign. So by default, it's a you insert from smallest to largest. Um. Yeah. I don't know why they're printing it this way. But yeah, that's how that's how by default it is. Um, value comparator. I think it's also by default smallest to largest. So if you do dot value comparator, it also inserts smallest to largest. Um, okay, so these 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 are pretty good. These matter. Um, find basically finds returns the position iterator to where the where it's found. So like, if I do uh, let's actually use this example. I think this is a good example. So the, these these methods are important. Okay, so here they're inserting 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 into this iterator. So they have my set and they have iterator it and they insert uh, i times 10, which is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So then if you do my set dot find, if you do your, your set name dot find, it actually returns the position of where it's at. So here, if you look at the iterator, Tells you the position where it's at. So whether you found it or not. And then uh, here he erases it. So he erases the 20. So now it's 10, 20, 30. And then he also erases the value of 40. So now it's only 10, 30, 50. So yeah, 10, 30, 50. Um, so the find function is pretty good because uh, you can check if a set contains a value or not. So if I do like, if uh, my set dot find 60 is not equal to my set dot end. So my, my set dot end is the end value of it. So if I, if what I found is not at the end, then that means it's not it's in the list, right? So this I mean 60 is in the list. But it's not. Right? Our, our set doesn't have 60. So this is the if statement if you want to see if uh, your set contains a value. So here, 
Whereas if I do my set dot find ten, uh, it's gonna say ten is in the list. Yeah, ten is in the list. Yeah, because so you would do check if it's not equal to the end. So if I find something, it's not equal to the end. That means it's in the list. You also could do if uh, it's equal to end, right? If I f try to find this value and I reach the end, then that means it's not in the list. So if I do like try to find 60, this is going to show that 60 is not in the list. My set that find is equal equal to the end. Yeah, 60 is not in the list. So yeah, that's a good part about find. Um, count, this is good. This is a good function to know. Um, count basically searches the, con the number of matches that's equivalent to value. So if I have like, let's say I inserted like three, six, nine, right? 10, um, count would check if the number of times I've inserted is an element of my set. So like if it's, uh, it basically counts how many times the element is inside the set. So. Here, if I do, here, so I have 10, 20, 30, 50. If I do my set dot count 10, it tells me how many times 10 appeared in my set. So this should just give me one. Yeah. Um, you, you would use this normally for like maps, but for ideally for anything that you insert like a set, it's always going to be one. And even if I do my set dot insert twice, it should be one. Unless it becomes two. That wouldn't make any sense. Yeah, it's still one. So you can use this to check if your set contains a value also. Use do dot count if it's greater than zero. Um, yeah. Um, upper bound. Okay. Oh, lower bound. Lower bound is like binary search. Um, you could use it for like find the find the value where it's like just less than it. So lower bound returns the first element which is not considered to go before value. So yeah, um, it returns an iterator. So here, if I do like Let's just copy this example. So here I have, I inserted 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, right? Then if I do a lower bound on 30, it returns the, it returns 30, right? Lower bound basically just is just searching for a value using binary search. So it return 30. Whereas if I do like an upper bound on 60, it would find the, just the value that's just larger than 60. So in our case, it would be 70. So yeah. Uh, so here it's gonna, if I erase lower to upper, oh, look, this is really confusing. <laughs> what they're doing is they're erasing the range between lower to upper. So any every value any value between thirty and up to sixty. So that'll be 10, 20, 70, 80, 90. So yeah. This is a confusing thing. Um yeah. 10, 20, 30, 70, 80, 90. So lower bound returns just a value that's just less than or equal to it. So in this case we'd return thirty. This upper bound is just like the value that's just greater than 60. So in this case, it's 70. And here they're erasing the range in the positions. So anything before, uh, before the, after the position of lower bound and before the position of the upper iterator. So it's erasing everything between 20 to seven, 20 to 70. Yeah. So all these values, that's what it's doing. Um, yeah, upper bound just returns to the value that is just right. 
just greater than the current value. Uh, yeah, just that's greater than the current value. Uh, so normally, if you wanted to use um, binary search, use lower bound because it's less than or equal to. Oh yeah, yeah, it returns an iterate to the first value that is not less than that. Oh, so it's like greater than. Yeah, you can use the upper bound or lower bound. It's basically just binary search. Um, equal range returns the bounds of a range that includes all the elements in the list that are equivalent to bound. Okay, so like um. Um. What is the range of, wait, what? Get range of equal elements. Returns their bounds of a range that includes all the elements in the container that are equivalent to bound. So it returns all elements that are equal to 30. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, so like it basically returns the values that are like just greater than 30 and less than 30. I think. Yeah, so just greater than 30, but then that's less than 30. So here we have like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. If I do an equal range, it's going to get me the values that are just Let me just get rid of this. Yeah, it just gives me 30 to 40, because that's the range. If I find a range between for 30, it's like 30 to 40. Whereas I've had like, um, let's see, let's say I have like 35, 40, then it should return uh, the range of 30 to 35, I think. Oh yeah, 30 to 40, oh wow, that's cool. Oh no, no. Okay, wait, hold up. Hold up. Let's make our thing 10, 20, 30, 35, 40, 50. And your set should be 10, 20, 35, 40, 50. It should have uh, 30 to 35, yeah, okay. So just greater than 30, but less than the second value that's just less than it. So what if it was like, I don't know. What if I tried like 10, it would be 10 to 20. Yeah, okay, so it's just like the value that's just right after it, that's what it's returning. It's kind of weird. Okay. All right. Um. Yeah, that's it. That's all the values. That's it. We went find count, lower bound, upper bound, equal range. You can get an allocator also. Create an allocator of elements. Well, this is like super low level. I guess you could allocate the number of elements you want in your set. Like I only want five five elements and it'll allow you to do that. You just do my set dot get allocator dot allocate five. But yeah, all right, that's all the that's literally all the methods of set. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.